Okay. <laughs> we'll do a quick. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear STEMinists, as we would like to say for all the supporters of girls and women in STEM. Welcome to our final event of the pilot project, uh, Local STEM Espresso, promoting women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to youth and from youth. My name is Bleriana Bino. I am the, one of the co-founders and the current executive director of the Center Science and Innovation for Development. And I'm very pleased to have a full room here today at Tula Center um, and to talk and to reflect about girls and women in STEM and why this is important for their social and economic empowerment. Uh, today we aim to showcase um, the creative and multimedia competences of our young people with whom we, we have worked in the past three months um, and reflect on how promoting girls and women in STEM contributes to their social and economic empowerment, as I said, um, and thus to a more equal society free of discrimination and free of violence. And um, in this sense, contributing, uh, boosting uh, girls and women to achieve their full potential and their aspirations. One of our flag initiative is the Network of Albanian Women in STEM. Uh, it is a joint effort by both men and women that was developed by SIDEV, initiated a couple of years ago, um, with the mission to exactly um, um, help the increase of representation and participation of girls in STEM in this uh, uh, so-called hard sciences that traditionally are thought to be men-dominated, but are actually a very important tool for the um, uh, empowerment of girls um, in Albania and worldwide. In this framework, we are very grateful to the support of UNDP in Albania for supporting this local um, initiative uh, of promoting the local women in STEM from Škodra, Pogradets and Duras, and this is done by youth and to youth primarily. Empowering women and girls and increasing their advocacy role in pushing forward the gender equality agenda is another uh, objective of this pilot project. So we are very happy to have here today with us um, Ms. Monica Merino, she is the UNDP resident representative in Albania, and thank you for coming, and we will hear for her, from her um, later on. This pilot project is done in the framework of the UN joint program Ending Violence Against Women in Albania. It is funded by the government of Sweden and implemented by UNDP Albania in cooperation with the Ministry of Health and Social Protection. And uh, we are delighted to have with us um, uh, Mrs. Petra Burcher, she is the head of development cooperation at the Embassy of Sweden in Albania. Um, thank you for coming. We will hear from you later on. And as we all know, Sweden is the a strongest supporter of gender equality in Albania and worldwide as well. And at SIDEV, we have had the pleasure to host in other occasions also the ambassador promoting the role of girls and women um, uh, in STEM. And we also have a representative from the Ministry of Health and Social Protection, Mrs. Brunilda Dervishai. Again, we will hear later on from her. We believe, of course, in partnership um, and working and supporting each other, particularly peer-to-peer -peer support with civil society organization is very important. And we have been lucky to cooperate with three local NGOs uh, in Škodra, in Pogradets, and in Duras, with Gruaja Te Gruaja, Sotperta Artmen, the Un Gruaja NGO. They work at the grassroots level. They work with girls and women in their local communities, and they supported us enormously, not only to identify young people to be part of the project, but also uh, to mentor them and to ensure that they get the most of this experience. So many thanks to all and deeply appreciate it. 
Um, so briefly, I would like to mention for those who don't know what we have been doing in the past three months with the support of UNDP. So we have been working, as I said, in Škodra, in Duras and in Pogradets. We have had um, the luck to organize three STEM talks with three women in STEM, members of our network. Uh, Teuta Jindi, she is a mathematician, Anila Paparisto, Deputy Director of the University of Tirana and also a biologist, and Sidore Lauku, she is a very young girl but very successful a software uh, engineer. So they talked to about 80 uh, boys and girls in these three cities about the relevance of studying or following or pursuing a career in STEM, but also more broadly on challenging young people and their perception about the role of women in society, in family, also in industry as well and how all of us can play our role to ensure their uh, equal participation and to ensure that we have gender equality and that we have a society that is free of discrimination and, uh, and of violence. Then based on those STEM talks, we organized boot camps. Uh, we had two mentors, uh, Valbona Sulce, thank you very much, and Lorin Cadio. We will also hear from them later on. They worked with young people, not simply on multimedia and creativity techniques and digital skills, but also on important uh, storytelling aspects and messages. So why it is important to identify, how to identify and how to do a profile of a successful uh, women in STEM and uh, to present them to other young people or to the public at large as successful uh, and role models that can inspire other girls to pursue this the, the same career. Um, so we had nine teams and these nine teams developed six podcasts and three videos. We will um, showcase later on briefly the videos, but then during the reception and the informal networking, we have on the back um, an exhibition, I would say. So you have monitors when you can uh, listen to the podcasts and also watch the videos that have been entirely created by young people. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank also the nine amazing women uh, who took time out of their busy schedule. They are all very successful to talk, to meet several times with our youngsters and to develop this, uh, this product. So we had Lady Alexi, she is an environmental engineer, Professor Magdalena Tsara, a chemist, uh, Professor Yer Kruja, she is a neurobiologist, Diana Mille, an architect, Johanna Gucci, a young biochemist in diaspora, Besmire Niko, a civil engineer, Vit uh, Vittore Sufi, a topographic engineer, Aurora Dibra, a biochemist, and Professor Mimosa Afizi, an astrophysicist. So um, it has been a very, very uh, intensive three months, but very rewarding at the same time. Uh, today, we will focus primarily on the young people experiences. Also, the mentor will share their experiences, but also then we will, with the other speakers, uh, reflect upon the, the relevance of social and economic empowerment of girls and women through STEM and how this can then uh, contribute to a, a free society, um, equal society free of discrimination and violence as well. So thank you again, and without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Ornella Rusta. She is a girl in STEM as well, and she is one of our uh, bootcamp participants from Duras. And she would share, please share with us your experience, but also what you do more broadly to work with other girls and boys uh, and promote their participation in STEM. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Ornella Rusta. I'm a third year computer science student at University Alexander Moisiu Duras. Uh, for the past two years, I have dedicated my undivided time and attention to build a community of students that uh, can connect through their common interest, which is technology. In 2020, when the pandemic hit and people were uh, fighting for their lives, that was the time when everybody needed to be part of something that produced positive solutions. And that's when I started the Students Club. I had noticed that there is a big gap between theory and practice in, the, in education. So I started to connect professionals of the field with students so that others could understand my motivation, goals, and intentions of founding the Students Club. Uh, since then, I have uh, constantly been faced with the same problem. The small amount of students that were participating in these activities. I couldn't understand why students were so indifferent um, about the opportunities I was trying to give them by getting to know them with professionals, new technologies with great future perspective, and the ways to learn more, even though we were present in Instagram. <laughs> it wasn't enough. Uh, but it, isn't that what we were lacking? More knowledge, um, being more in touch with professionals? 
Well, I realized that the message, the message was not getting through to the right crowd. Yes, I was doing all this for the students, but they were not hearing about it. And I started to learn more about the power of media. How important is that the message is delivered to the right time to the right people. Uh, we started exploring different ways to gain attention to our activities by making reels, short videos. Uh, we even made a podcast, but our main focus was only one platform, Instagram. Uh, we saw some results, but we knew that there was more to be done. As students, we had done all we could, so I started seeking ways to learn more for myself. I participated in this project, hoping to learn more about video producing, and I got more than I was expecting. I got a 360 degree view of video and audio content production. I learned how a script should be written. I learned how to edit videos and make them look professional. I learned how important is the role of an interviewer when making a portrait interview. I learned that people need to get as much as possible from our work. So we have to use all platforms and learn to use them well and target our, our, our audience in the right way. And uh, the interview itself that we did with Professor Yara Kruya was a learning experience in itself. We got together with my teammate, Sonia, and um, we decided how to conduct the interview. I made the script and conducted the interview and she was in charge of the recording and uh, video editing. During the interview, professor, the professor shared with us her secret to success, which was being consistent. And that is what I would like uh, to share with youth. Uh, the key to every project that you do, um, to your studies, to everything you uh, take into your power to complete is to be consistent. Even though uh, you may face some challenges uh, in your way, uh, you always have to trust in yourself and uh, uh, make sure that all you do, you do because you like it and you, you are producing something good for others as well. Um, from my experience, I would like to suggest to the youth that uh, the way to, or what I have learned from my experience is that the way to, to know yourself is uh, for you to participate in voluntary work in different fields. That is the, the thing that offers you opportunities, uh, gets you in touch with different people from different backgrounds and offers you the most possibilities that you can have. Multimedia is now in the hands of everybody and offers great platforms for everyone who wants who want their voice to be heard. So um, what I say to my fellow colleagues and students, I say, use the opportunities that you get, uh, always seek change and uh, improvement and never, uh, and never focus on only one thing because you have to be multidimensional and learn as much as possible if you have the opportunities. Uh, for this participation in this project, I would like uh, to thank Gloriana for giving me the opportunity to be part of organizing this, uh, uh, this event. Um, Loring and Valbona for all the knowledge and dedication and always being ready to help us with our difficulties. Also my teammate, Sonia, and everybody that I had the chance to know and collaborate with. And I hope we'll see again in future projects. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ornella, also for highlighting the need for proactiveness on the side of young people, for also the need that we have to motivate them, but also to include them and engage them also in complex matters and trust their judgment and their suggestions um, and have them as agents uh, with uh, uh, equal opportunities and with uh, uh, their own rights. And now I would like to hear from uh, Ergi, Ergi Artunda from uh, the boot camp in, in Škodra. The floor is yours. Hello, everybody. My name is Ergi Artuna. I'm a, study, I'm a student at the University of Law in Škodra. I today here represent the bootcamp from Škodra. Uh, it was really an honor for me to be part of this project, not only because we had the chance to understand these uh, women that work in this manly field, but we also, they were really open to, with us and we got the chance to be part of let's say a little bit of their life just for a few moments and it was really from from what I heard from them and especially from professor Hafizi it was the thing that they didn't believe in the stereotype they, leave, they believed in passion and the the message that professor Hafizi 
told me, and I'll keep it with me always, is you look at the things without a gender, but with passion. So you always have to look at your work with passion about it. It's not gender in it, it's just passion. It doesn't matter if it's woman or man, it's passion and it would always be great. If it is man or woman, it doesn't matter. But for the woman who work in the manly fields like uh, economic, uh, engineering, science and everything, she said they have to be strong because it's really hard, but they have to be strong and follow their dreams. I also have to thank Dariana and Lorraine and Valbona, also uh, Suela and my teammates for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ergi. Yes, Professor Mimosa Fizi, uh, we've had the pleasure to have her as a guest speaker in one of our podcast series as well in November last year. And she really is an inspiration, particularly for young girls who want to follow um, physics and astrophysics. Um, uh, so yes, I encourage all of you to listen to her video, which is slightly longer than the others, but that's exactly because she, she based it on what Ergi said on her passion about science. And now I'd like to go to Sagesa Baliu. She is a young girl from and I have to say uh, this on the record as well, that I particularly enjoyed the boot camp in Pogradets with the high school students. Um, of course, Durs and Škodra were excellent as well, but um, um, there was a different vibe with uh, under 18s in, uh, in Pogradets. The floor is yours and the mic is over there. Eriola. Hello everybody, I'm Sagesa and I study at uh, Moram Chalaku High School in Pogradets. Before I start, I would like to thank uh, Valbona, Lorien, Edesa and everyone who made this great opportunity happen. I would also like to give special thanks to the nonprofit organization uh, Ungruaya in Pogradets and to thank them for their amazing work. I'm starting without hesitation, uh, speaking how um, my big desire of being an active girl made me part of this project. During this training, the time passed so fast and I learned a lot, um, such as working for a podcast or editing a variety of videos and using programs as like uh, Encore or Kinemaster. And when it comes to the conversation I had with Joanna, I reinforced the idea how much girls and women are worth. Firstly, we talked with Joanna according to the podcast and she was ready to help us despite her huge workload. Joanna is a girl from Pogradis, a girl that has always been uh, breaking taboos for Albanian mentality. Uh, this podcast is realized in a few days with an intensive work. Uh, from Joanna, I understood that despite Albania limits for many things, we girls are able to overcome all the obstacles. Uh, I would think that uh, it would be something great if this initiative and others like this one will be developed in other cities of Albania in order to make uh, youngsters um, being engaged and make them realize the importance of girls and women in every aspect of life. Uh, at the time when youngsters may encounter many difficulties during their formation. Uh, these activities have a lot of importance uh, for motivating and leading uh, these youngsters. Uh, these activities come to youngers as a help for being more developed in the multimedia sciences, a brand which today can extend more and more. The contribution of girls and women in science is amazingly huge. They have overcome many limits, uh, suppressing the masculine society. They have uh, also deserved to be estimated for their great work. Girls and women have always been part of a vital science, but now it is not the moment to stay in the background, but let's give them the face, uh, voice and shape to their work. Uh, in addition to the podcast, we have also made a video interview with our science teacher in uh, our high school. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Sagesa. I think um, the story, the podcast of Joanna, not simply about breaking taboos about the, about gender identity, which is very important, but also she is a young girl. She is a young scientist in diaspora and at SIDEV and the network, and as we've discussed with uh, UNDP Albania as well. But part of also regional network, I think engaging the diaspora as well is very important in um, in the overall um, um, uh, STEM agenda for women, but. Also also in the social and economic empowerment of women. And now I would like to hear from Valbona and Lorin as the two mentors and trainers of our uh, young people, some reflections about the, the boot camps, but also more broadly about um, uh, the relevance uh, for educating uh, girls in, in STEM. Valbona, we start with you, thank you. Thanks, Liliana. Thank you, everybody, for being uh, today here with us. It's no secret anymore that among many Heads that I wear in my professional life as freelance journalist, media researcher, training is my favorite part of the job, and training youth especially because you can see in practice how uh, theory can be translated into practice and how uh, that uh, knowledge is absorbed so quickly by uh, young minds. I've been teaching uh, media and communication since 2005 in university and high schools with modules of media literacy, but this project with CDEV uh, and boot camps was special for me for three reasons. First, because uh, it has a gender component and uh, as a media researcher in the gender field, uh, I'm very attached to it and this is, has nothing to do with my uh, costume. I asked for a blue one, but it has nothing uh, in the shop yesterday. Uh, second, it was done outside Tirana and uh, we know that there is so much potential out there, but so little opportunities. And uh, third, it is ultimate proof of my conviction, and it is a little bit of my theory that the only way left to change the narrative of media about women and girls in Albania is through empowering audiences and not through uh, going through old ways of uh, uh, classical ways of training journalists and all stuff. And I will explain uh, what I think so. When I say potential, I'm referring to the level of skills we found in those th uh, three cities. And uh, you can testify by the products that uh, was made uh, in, uh, they were made in one month. And uh, without those skills, it would be impossible to have uh, nine uh, uh, products, six uh, podcasts and three uh, videos. Uh, from people that uh, never dealt with media in a professional uh, way. Uh, saying that, I would draw attention on the fact that while the technical skill of our kids are equivalent to their peers in Europe, when it comes to content, we have problems. And that the part I covered in the trainings and uh, because I covered content and storytelling, so I had concentrate my talk here. Content we know was about women and girls in STEM, but before going there, we had to pass through a mind road, uh, the stereotypes about women and girls in general we have every day in our mainstream media and in our public discourse. And in this respect, the training addressed also in great deal the way women and girls are portrayed in the media, what's wrong about it and how we can, can correct it. So I can uh, recall uh, with satisfaction now little discussion that were made during the trainings because uh, this was... Uh, a rare opportunity that we give students and uh, youngsters to talk about these things outside of the formal curriculum, like in schools or in uh, other uh, environments. Uh, the training made youngsters think and reflect and through concrete examples, we showed how to change narratives on women and girls. From there, it was easy then to pass on women and girls in STEM because when you have cleared your way up from preconceived cliches, you have all the possibilities to be creative and show what you can do. Another value of the boot camps was to trigger interest about women and girls in science in their respective cities. And I can recall because uh, at the 
first they were like stuck. Where are the scientists in our cities? There are none. I mean, uh, they are all centered in Tirana because they have universities and laboratories. So we learned together how to identify women and girls in uh, science and look also for people that they have uh, dedicated their life to science, like teachers of chemistry, biology, of mathematics. They are not scientists working in big laboratories or fancy ones, but they are women in STEM. So we learn together how to identify women and girls that have contribution in, in science. I can confess that at the beginning, I was a little bit afraid if we could make it in such little time, so many products, but the bootcamp served also to teach youngsters about the values of working together choosing a leader, how to work in groups, and how to listen to each other. And OK, some of them went a little bit too far, feeling that they could go with the interviews without consulting with us the question first. And they came back to us with 20 minutes of interviews, not knowing what to take on to left. OK, but the mentoring process was also for this to help all the way long until the um, finalization of the products. Some of them also found difficult to transcribe all the interviews in order to make the script. So we had to do that together. But, but all in all, I am proudly confessing that we made it. it. This is the proof that when people get together with the right skills, everything is possible. But this is not enough. I think this program showed that in every city there are youngsters who wait for the right guidance to show their capabilities in the field of multimedia and tell their stories. Albania has a young population, the youngest in Europe, and we should use this opportunity to offer them the best of the possibilities. As Louis Armstrong said once, STEM Spresso is a small step today, but if multiplied in other cities, in every corner of Albania, this represents a giant leap for their generation to change the narratives about women and girls and put an end to the violence against them. Kudos to them. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Barbona. Um, Lorin, uh, Lorin Cadio, one of our mentors, also executive director of Citizen Channel, very much working with uh, young people. In addition to what Barbona mentioned about boot camps, how can we tap into these uh, um, skills of young people and this potential of them for a more equal um, uh, society, achieving gender equality as well, and the social and economic empowerment of women? Yeah, this is where I would like to take it from. Uh, I would say equality and democratization of communication. So uh, what we work with the group was uh, empowering everyone to be able to tell a story using the mobile phone. Uh, we used an app called Anchor, which is Swedish. So thank you, Sweden, for, <laughs> for, uh, for Anchor. And uh, also other mobile apps that enable the uh, young people to tell the stories. And now everyone has the storytelling device uh, in their pockets. Of course, it has been intensive. Of course, all of the uh, participants had to go through a simulation first. So we also did <clears throat> a lot of products during the workshop, which uh, we only saw, we can maybe show uh, some of them, but they were uh, very interesting, uh, improvised 15 minute uh, stories. So everyone had 15 minutes of time to do a podcast, an interview, uh, a video, just to put in practice everything uh, they did. So uh, yeah, I would like to point out that we were only the mediators. The ones who did the work are the group of uh, youngsters, they proposed us uh, the ideas, they were the ones who went there to do the filming, scripting, editing. We were only helping uh, throughout the uh, process. And I think what we achieved is really amazing. Like we told nine stories, uh, that's a lot. But we have also a big group of storytellers now that can replicate, they can tell other stories. So uh, now we have nine women that had the opportunity to share their stories. Of course, there is need to tell more. Of course, uh, there is need to go to other cities to talk to uh, the youngsters. I was impressed about the level of knowledge they already had. So sometimes we were in a difficult situation. I was like, what, what do we have to teach them? Because they already know uh, everything. And uh, of course, learning never ends. We also learned during the uh, training process. So uh, my key takeaway from this is that uh, if we are able to empower the people 
to be storytellers using a device they have every day in their pocket, then we can manage to uh, do amazing work and then we can manage to empower them to be their own uh, media, to be citizen journalists. I'm a big fan of citizen journalism, as you can uh, tell by the name of the center and director. So uh, I believe that everyone can be a journalist. Of course, uh, there is need to, to uh, talk to the youngsters, to talk to the people about ethics, about how to use uh, the device in a, in a responsible way. And there is need for advancement also in the technical in the technical aspects and we can see that in uh, a very short but intensive amount of time they can do amazing things so i'd like to end with a big applause for the group of youngs well done thank you Lorin. thank you very much um and now i would like to pass the floor to ariola vaco from the shelter for abused women and girls how you work on the grassroots you work uh, um, every day with difficult cases as well um, um, i assume but how can we um, uh, tap the, the technology and the digital skills of young people to um to to raise awareness about sexual violence but also about uh, gender-based violence as well thank you Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Sida, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here in the final event of this, uh, of this project. Uh, my name is Ariola, and for several years now, I've been working in supporting and I've been leading interventions which target vulnerable communities and individuals, including the survivors of uh, sexual violence. As you are aware, Um, as you are aware, sexual violence is one of the worst forms of violence and represents a big violation of human rights in, in general. It leads to physical and emotional distress and often to an irrevocable uh, loss of dignity and self-esteem for the survivors. Um, as I've witnessed in my work experience, um, Sexual violence can happen anytime, it can happen everywhere, and unfortunately, it can happen to anyone. But statistically wise, um, women and girls are specifically at risk. We can see that among the survivors of sexual violence, women and girls are the most common ones. It is also like the phenomenon of sexual violence is often illustrated as the iceberg phenomenon, because we can see that the number of cases of sexual violence increases every year. And it shows that it indicates that of the existing cases, only some, for not saying few of them, are reported. There are several factors contributing to sexual violence and also to impeding the survivors to report sexual violence. And these are also grouped in uh, individual, family, community, societal, uh, societal factors. And I would like to, in my personal opinion, it's important to acknowledge and to understand the power of the societal factors among the, the other factors that I've listed. Um, as a frontline worker, I have seen many women um, being threatened with more violence if they report violence and even death sometimes. Uh, I have heard and I've seen communities, people in the community saying that a woman or a girl should be ashamed and embarrassed if she talks to anyone, if she's raped. And if she's raped, then she must have done something careless to be in that specific situation. And there is a, let's say, a general belief that the violence that the survivors um, experience is not that serious. But what happens if a woman or a girl who has been a survivor of sexual violence is treated with disrespect and is treated with hostility? Um, it happens that in this way, we send a very powerful message to other women and girls about the consequences of breaking the silence. They will be afraid to uh, disclose, they will be afraid to seek support, and they will also be afraid to report the violence to, uh, to the authorities. Um, but 
the good news is that these social factors can and they can change and they do change. So um, I believe that developing a safe technology uh, will help uh, survivors to seek support and will help survivors to disclose and to report to the, to the authorities. Of course, it is needed that this technology should not uh, expose women and girls to uh, more risk, to more harm. For example, imagine what will happen to a woman who is the, a survivor of sexual violence if she seeks support through online services, if the perpetrator finds out that uh, finds documents or proofs in her phone. So we need to see and we need to consider the right of the survivor to um, use these tools and to use the technology on a safely and privately, uh, privately manner. But as I said, there are numerous ways to use the technology uh, as a force for, for good. So I believe that uh, young people can develop, um, can develop platforms that can uh, be used as a tool where they can disseminate information, they can raise the awareness of the general public with regards to sexual violence attributing factors, the consequences, in a way preventing the sexual violence to, to happen. And um, of course, there can be uh, tools developed to be used as a peer support tools where victims, uh, survivors of, of sexual violence can share their stories and they can help the others who have experienced or witnessed sexual violence but are too afraid to, to seek support. Um, I would, uh, I would like to have a virtual space for the, for the survivors of, of uh, sexual violence where they can seek information, where services, in-person services are not, are not available. And I think that this is very relevant to Albania because we do lack, a, uh, we do lack specialized and adequate services for, for the survivors of, of sexual violence. Um, application can be developed to um, kind of guide the victims on how to seek support and how to identify the, the available and the specialized, uh, specialized services. Um, fighting sexual violence and gender-based violence in general is, not, uh, is, is on all of us. It's not just the victims, the government, the institutions, the NGOs, but it's on all of us. And I think that using the technology to um, help the survivors to seek support and to help the survivors to be provided with, with support is a way to empower women and girls. Um, I hope I didn't take much time. So thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Uh, thank you, Ariola. <laughs> um, no, you didn't take much time and also very relevant to the messages that uh, that you provided for, for us here today. Um, um, it's about education, of course, awareness raising, but also about support, uh, which is very important. And the technology and the digital skills or the multimedia skills or the storytelling skills that we are um, um, teaching to our young people uh, in, in this project are basically uh, there to be used for uh, for these purposes to ensure that um, uh, we boost girls and women, uh, we socially and economically empower them uh, so as they are uh, um, able to stand for themselves to seek support as well, but uh, in the same time to to uh, to prepare citizens for the society that can uh, contribute to a society that is free of discrimination or violence. Um, now, according to the agenda, we will. Um, uh, see together one video that is produced by, uh, by the team uh, of Budka Minduras. This is the, um, a video of Yera Kruja, uh, Professor Yera Kruja, a uh, neurobiologist. Uh, it is with English subtitles and the other videos, as I said, during the um, reception and informal networking, you can have a look at the exhibition and also listen to the podcast. Sinerologue. 
dhe si shetë një shërbu universitarë të morën. Si jam nga dursi dhe kam ndikimin e ati detit që nuk më hishë të gjithë jetën. Ka që nga vurtuar një jetë, që në filmet të parë, e ishte që po mos të ishte një disiplinë të tjene, po mos të ishte një përri të pobej, po mos të organizohë të shmirë, nuk e sepse sa së njërë. Pra, nuk varet shumë nga shkalla inteligencës, varet shumë sa sistematike dhe sa disiplinë. E të zgjodha për si një neurologi, por sigurisht një neurologi është një tek shumë interesantë, e që jam përpjetu të bëjë të një aktivitet, botimi, ose aqë që e të kërkimi, shkencore, brënda një kornize, pak shtërnguse, se nuk i kemi të gjitha kushtet për të bërë ato që që e kërkimi shkencore njërë të njërë. Por të bërë të kërkimi modest, më të për të përqëndruar në kuadrilimi, që ne kemi që bëzuar njërë të diagnozës të tjërë, të elementeve epidemiologjikë të filmive të njështë në neurologjike e tjërë, që janë braqitur në shumë, aktivitet të brënda dhe jashtë zbëndit edhe se atë e të janë bëndit. Kam indur fmi pare se filloj punë, kam indur fmi që studente, që prej kam që mami që ku fillova punën, por ki një nga pikat të rëndësisht me të ati filloj, ka që në mbajta si pedagog për e fakë dhe të gjithësës. Pra, ishte një një arritje së të madhe në atë moshtërë, dhe në një në një katedrë, se kështu ishim të emërtuar në fotë, shumë të nësishme si që shta e neurologisë dhe psikiatrisë. Pra, kështë fillimi që pasaj sigurisht më dhe s'ti më të të që përpa. Kërë dominon në ndjenë, ku kemi që ku kam së dyarë në njësë, gradualisht, filloj raportit të barazotët dhe të kalore nga vajzat. Sot, është një numër shumë i madhë vajzat studentët njësës në krasim e djenë, që që sigurisht që dhe raportin brapa për specializim në rologjit dhe të tjiru. Pra, dominojnë vajza. Ma di mund të them që në rologji kemi ndofta pak më të përdjenë se sa mesatarja, se sa raporti që mund të kemi pak të kemi njësës. Gjithë si vajza dominojnë. Pas të glenë puna dhe profesionit. Por të ishë organizurit dhëmë të tërë. Në praktik, në eksperiencët e mija, në kontaktet e mija, me kolegët mija, shumë që kanë avancuar shumë edhe i në vëndit e tjera të Europës është të më gjërë. Një gruat, kur vendos të bëjë karrierë, në një shumis të rasta, nga një dëqarë, nuk kërën të një. Dhe i përpushtojë karrierës. Falë shëqërisë tonë që ka shënë e tjilë, që i kështë e familjen të shënë, ne imi dukuar në një mënyrë të tjilë që ka puna po, organizimi punës po, po familja është kënë e mirë. Të marrët me shkencë është një zbukurimi e të sotë. Do dhe thëmë, të dalë jashtë të limiteve të profesionit të tjeshtë, që mund tjetë me gjëra shumë më mekanike, Mërë me shkencë është një hapja horizontë. Vajzat mund të bëjnë shumë mirë, mund të bëjnë më do një herë edhe më nëse të mirë. Yes, this was the first video, and as I said, yes, an applause for Professor Yera, but also for the team who developed it. Um, and we have another one for Bitsmire, an engineer, a civil engineer from Pogradets, and from uh, Professor Hafiz, an astrophysicist that uh, are streaming now on the background, but that you can watch later on. I think um, uh, the message that Professor Yera provided about the work-life balance is very important because when it comes to women and their career, either in, in STEM, but in other fields as well, 
there is the usual uh, stereotype that either you do the career or you do the family, but Professor Yera was exactly arguing and giving the message that uh, you can do both and you can do both um, uh, very well. Um, now, after the, let's say, the, the first session with the experiences of the bootcamp and what we've done and the experiences of our young people, I would like now to pass the floor to Mrs. Brunilda Dervisha. She's from the Ministry of Health and Social Protection. Um, covering at policy level, of course, also gender equality. The floor is yours and thank you so much for coming. Thank you. A dear organizer and participant in these events, I would like to start by firstly congratulating mm -hmm. the organizer for the focus of the project they implemented and the work they did to accelerate the engagement of Albanian girls, boys, young women and young men in STEM. I would like to also point out how important it is to particularly mention these groups by avoiding using the general word youths, since we know how invisible women and girls are in many generalized and gender blind documents, and especially when it comes for some fields such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Data and research globally have shown that despite their tremendous progress towards increasing their participation in higher education, women remain a minority in digital information, technology, computing, physics, mathematics, and engineering. In addition, women and girls compose the half of population, but they do not have the same access and control over resources as men and boys having many issues. Uh, including internet and safe uh, control over. Uh, if women are unable to access the internet and feel safe online, they are consensually unable to develop the necessary digital skills and engage in digital spaces. But these are the fields that are driving the digital revolution and so many of the jobs of tomorrow. If, if girls and young women are lacking the opportunity of gaining the necessary digital skill today, many of them most probably will remain outside the labor market tomorrow. And this is Albania reality too. Data from INSTAT, publication of women and men in Albania, 2021, show that for the academic year 2019-2020, there were 3.4% young women graduated in information and communication technologies compared, compared to 9.3% young men graduated in the same program and 6% girls graduating in engineering, engineering, manufacturing and construction compared to 20% boys graduated in the same programs. However, the programs with a high number of young women graduating remain business, administration and law, art and humanities, uh, social science, journalism and information. The above trend uh, is clear evidence on the influence of gender stereotypes in the division of professions. The persistence of horizontal gender segregation in educational and occupational fields contributes decisively to the spread of gender stereotypic beliefs about a natural fit of women in careers in more expressing and human center fields and men in technical and math in, uh, intensive fields. Gender stereotypes are part of a broader belief system that include attitudes towards female and male family roles, female and male occupation, and gender associated uh, uh, perception on the self. As bipolar constructs, gender stereotypes imply that what is masculine is not feminine and vice versa. The low proportion of women in STEM leads to the spread of a gender stereotypical image of math and science as a male domain and beliefs about male supremacy in technical and math uh, intensive fields. In turn, such beliefs affect young people's career choice, leading to mutual reinforcement of gender stereotypes and gender gaps in career related interests and choices. So we all, all must do our best to fight these gender stereotypes and to close the gender gap in different ways. An important element here is to start since in earlier education by presenting the positive models of women in science, as well as uh, by explaining the link between STEAM and the future of job 
which will be so much oriented on them in this new digital, uh, digitalization era. The Ministry of Health and Social Protection is the responsible ministry to coordinate action to gender mainstreaming and for advancing towards gender equality is considered the need to promote women, young women and girls participating participation in STEAM and digitalization is uh, part of the new uh, uh, national strategy for gender equality 2021-2030 as approved in June 2021. Some of these measures, particularly focused on these issues, are planned. The first strategy goals of this strategy, full meal, uh, fulfillment of economic and social rights of women, young women, girls and men, young men and boys in the society, and the uh, empowerment of women, young women and girls in all their diversity, aiming and an import, uh, improvement and sus uh, sustainability of uh, environment, uh, environmental grand, green economy and their equal participation in the digitalization process. Some of the measures foreseen in this respect are stimulation and support for the apprenticeship of women, young women and girls in all their diversity from rural area, ethnic minorities, persons with disabilities, LGBT uh, plus the elderly, single mothers, survivors of violence, trafficking girls who are mothers, migrants, and asylum seekers, including for innovative ideas and on uh, environmental economy and digitalization. Uh, in the strategy, you can find all the measures that uh, are linked with uh, uh, this uh, 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 this field. Uh, but I uh, want to mention uh, one specific uh, objective specific of this strategy, uh, 1.3, uh, re uh, reduction of barriers keeping women, young women and girls away from the labor market and the improvement of access to decent work, including uh, non-traditional, in particular science, technology, engineering, mathematics for women, young women and girls in all their diversity. Uh, to summarize, I would like to, uh, to highlight again the role of each institution at the central and local level, as well as of civil society organization, international organization, and of each of one here on fighting uh, gender stereotypes and promoting women, young women and girls participation in STEAM and digitalization but by uh, wishing a lot of success and opportunities to extend such initiative in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno, also for bringing in the data and the statistics, which are very important. Um, as a center and as a network, we noticed that um, uh, in Albania, there are girls that graduate in STEM, so in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and IT. But then when we move into the labor market that you were mentioning, or into the later of career um, uh, decision making as well, we see mainly men rather than women. So that's why it is important to focus not only on the participation of girls and women in STEM for their social and economic empowerment, but also on their representation. So they need to be in decision making so as they not uh, um, um, men to take decisions for them in the sense, but also for them to be able to reach their full potential. And now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Monica Merino, the UNDP Albanian resident representative in Albania. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for the support. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. And first of all, I want to say thank you to, for making this event in English. I think that uh, Petra and myself is we really appreciate because it's the first time and congratulations because you managed the English so well. So I have enjoyed very much to listening to you without the translation mechanism. So thank you, really. Um, I'm, I'm here uh, to actually learn from you. So thank you for having us talk at the end because I think you are the protagonist and we're here uh, to learn about your stories and about your amazing work. Uh, maybe before I, I want to provide you with some key messages, I want to take some of the key words that I listen from you. Uh, first of all, from Ornella. Yes, and you talk about the importance of being consistent and consistency in your work, in your study. So I think that's, that's very important. And then I go back when I was your age. And, and I, I think that it is true that I think I've been very consistent in my life and, and that has been a key success factor. So congratulations. And I'm sure you're going to have great success if you follow that consistency and discipline. Also from 
Ergi, he talked about the importance about passion and doing everything with passion. And, and then I'm also come back to my personal journey. And I think that I'm very privileged to have this uh, position because I have a purpose in my work and have passion for what I do. So I really also echo your words of the importance of having passion. And then from, and then, and, and the Albanian names are very difficult for me, but I'm learning. Yes, yes, yes. So, and you were talking about breaking taboos, uh, overcome obstacles, and you're such a, a young lady, you know, in, in high school. So it's so inspiring to, to listen to you talking like that, because for sure, when I was your age, I wasn't, I wasn't talking like that. So you young people have so much opportunities uh, nowadays with the technology, with the digital skills that for sure, I just for you to know the first time I, I had access to a computer or send an email, it was when I was 20. Yeah, sending an email was what an, an amazing thing at that time. So thank you so much. Of course, I want to thank you uh, for the centers for science, innovation, for development, and also for the network of Albania Women in STEM you know, to, to host this event here today. This is my first time here, and it's a very, uh, I, think, I think, a very appropriate format, you know, and thank you for, for your words and, and also for the work that you do every day, you know, empowering women and girls. Um, maybe just to provide some key messages from my side, and I was afraid of, of I was telling my colleagues, uh, not giving like a boring, a speech, you know, to, to these people and, and try to give you with some key takeaways. I think that I echo with what you said that what happened during that COVID. And I think we have to acknowledge that due to the COVID pandemic, we change in many different ways personally. And I think you mentioned that what to do, you know, during COVID. And for us in our work, we have seen that this digital transition has been accelerated by the COVID and that has brought STEM and digital skills in the forefront of our development agenda. So I think that's a key development of how much now the importance of STEM and digital skills for women and girls, both to have access to education, but very important employment, you know. Um, I also want to share with you, and, and my regional director was here, uh, three weeks ago and, and we had a breakfast with, with Petra, that also UNDP, we have a regional perspective regarding women economic empowerment and together with the Regional Economic Council, we have prepared women economic empowerment, a joint action plan for the Western Balkans. I think this is a very comprehensive uh, study and, and framework and I do want to offer you to see it and, and and share with you because I think it's, it's very important. And just to share with you that one of the key drivers of change that we acknowledge are very important for the region is closing the gender gaps in digitalization and STEM. So for UNDP, this is gonna be a core component of our work uh, for the coming years. I also want to share with you uh, because we also have a joint initiative with UN UNICEF we just co-created a first regional platform. It's called STEM for All. So I think this is a, a platform where you can have lots of resources available for you. And you were talking also the importance of the diaspora and the regional perspective. So we have this new uh, instrument. It has a lot of information for an opportunity for women and girls in STEM. So now that I'm here, I, I also think that this platform can be a lot of benefit for a lot of you and for our work. Um, thank you, uh, Brunilda, because I think that you provided um, very important information regarding the situation of STEM uh, and digital skills of women and girls in Albania. And thank you so much also for indicating that this is also a priority in the gender equality strategy that you have recently uh, formulated and, and presented. So uh, um, from our side, an acknowledgement of the important efforts uh, of uh, the government and many on this topic. So thank you so much. And, and yes, indeed, even though Overall, in, in the world, we have seen that we have some gain regarding more women coming to STEM fields, as you rightly indicated, it's not even proportion. So there's still some fields who are 
mainly men. And of course, we have that you said a computer science is one really, you know, unbalanced in a way. And also we have the mathematics engineering, right? So just going back to my personal journey, I remember that when I decided to go to university with all my female friends, there was only one woman, one friend who went to be an engineer. And then we all went to the business administration. So even at that time, it was completely a breakthrough having a woman going to the engineer career. Um, and then maybe also I want to also give my appreciation to the a civil society organization that also partnered with us. Uh, I'm not gonna even try to say it in Albanian, so I'm gonna go into English, woman to woman, meet the woman and today for the future. I think that you, we really value your daily work because you're there uh, supporting women and girls in the different areas. I also want to come back and echo your words of Balbona saying the enormous potential that we have in Albania and outside of Tirana, you know? So I think that for us in UNDP, we also focus uh, our work in being there in the, all of the regions of the country. And for sure, it's, it's very good to know that in this case, we prioritize uh, three important um, local governments and local municipalities. And we're so happy that we have people from outside Tirana in this occasion. Um, let me also, of course, express our gratitude to the government of Sweden and CIDA um, for your leadership and commitment. I have expressed this publicly uh, in other spaces. Sweden, it is the strongest contributor for gender equality in Albania. So thank you so much because you're really an important champion. And I think that you also have seen at the UN and UNDP as a long lasting partnership and thank you for your trust. Maybe I wish. So maybe just my final remarks, and I think I want to say this because I think they're very important, and, and I really, I, I really believe them um, from my heart. Um, empower women and girls mean a more equal society, free from all forms of violence, discrimination, and exclusion. Gender equality in STEM is a prerequisite for an equal future that leaves one, no one behind. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your words, also for listening so tentatively to each of us um, and echoing some key messages. Um, um, I cannot agree more with you about the importance of access to education and to labor market. And uh, one of the things that we're trying to lobby or raise awareness is about the transfer from non-tech to tech as an instrument for the social and economic empowerment of, of, of girls. And uh, also considering those data about the large number of girls studying let's say social sciences and having difficulties in accessing the labor market, then um, it has also other social repercussions that have to do with their status in, in society or in the family. So uh, non-STEM to STEM or non-tech to tech is also um, uh, a way to go. And um, I'll, I take this opportunity also to mention Boost, which is another UNDP uh, program. Uh, some of our young uh, girls in STEM in the network have applied and are part of the mentoring program now. So let's see how it goes. Goals. It's another opportunity to, to boost exactly uh, uh, girls and women in STEM. And so um, last but not least, very important, with special thanks to Sweden, the floor is for Mrs. Uh, Petra Butcher, the Head of Development Cooperation at the Embassy. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for having me and not choosing my ambassador this time because uh, this was really a great event. So I would have uh, sort of uh, been very sad to miss out. Uh, it's been extremely inspiring uh, to listen to all of you uh, today. I have also put down some lines. Maybe we didn't put the same takes, but that will be interesting to see. Um, it is great. I want to thank also for, for hosting this and uh, organizing this uh, in this very nice place. I will need to say this. I love Tula Center. I think it's fantastic. It's such a creative environment. Um, talking about gender stereotypes, I, I need to go back a little bit to the 70s when I was born. I was born totally free from gender stereotypes. Uh, not because I'm, uh, probably because I'm coming from Sweden, but I was brought up in an environment where everything was possible. 
you didn't talk about men or women. It was just go, go ahead, do whatever you want. So I was brought up in this uh, probably quite naive world. Uh, I, I did wake up later on and understood that there is gender stereotypes. But when I was brought up, I was brought up by, by a grandfather, for example, that was fighting for, for women's right to her own body. And he, he was born 1907. I mean, he was very, very old. And that, that was the environment I came from. So when I was five years old, I said, I want to become a pilot. And they said, yeah, go ahead, go be a pilot. And I, I didn't know the obstacles. And uh, when I was 16, I started to take my private pilot license. And when I was 18, I had it in my hand. So that's how I sort of started my uh, own STEM, uh, then very limited career. Because then, then I woke up from this bubble and realized there is a lot of gender stereotypes out there and I need to do something else. I cannot go on in, in my track. So that's, that's the background when, where I came from. Uh, and that's why I'm so engaged in, especially what we're doing within the Swedish Development Corporation, gender area, we walk the talk. We really love gender. We think and we believe in gender equality and everything we do. It's not only the programs that we are doing together with, with UNDP, UN Women and UNFPA in ending violence against women and together with the ministry. We do it in every intervention that we are uh, implementing here in Albania. It doesn't matter if it's environment or if it's in the water sector or if it's in uh, together with the civil society or if it's uh, supporting INSTAT in building their capacity as a public agency. Gender is a part of everything. So it's a very important to work against gender-based violence. It's also very important and that is referred to here as well, to improve the legal and policy framework in Albania on gender equality. And we are doing that as well. And we are promoting uh, women in political participation, providing training and education when it comes to, to gender. We are doing that within the community policing program to, together with the Albanian state police. But what we, I think we really, don't have a solution on right now. And that's why you are so important sitting here. And that is to, to challenge the, the gender norms and the stereotypes and to change the mindset and the behavior and how we see each other and how we act uh, together. And that is the most difficult part. The other are quite technical, but the other on how we see each other, that is what we have to fight together not only as Albanians, but as Swedes, every day in, in our efforts. Sweden has a feminist foreign policy, and uh, that is uh, the first country in the world that has a femi feminist foreign policy. Others have followed. And what is that about? Well, it's quite simple, actually. It's about her rights, your rights as women here, or my rights. It's about power, it's about money, it's about autonomy. It is simple, it's reasonable, it's a wise thing to follow. Yet very, very challenging, but because it concerns sharing power and that is challenging. Uh, just a few more words, and then, and I guess we have gone beyond the convincing part on why it's important to have women in STEM. That is something that has been discussed for very many years. The evidence is clear. Uh, increases innovation, competitiveness, competitiveness, and growth. It is good for business, it is good for society, and it's good for women. So we should work much harder on the how how to support and re retain and support the women in their careers, how to address family and social barriers as the unpaid career work, how to support the Albanian women to take off some of their hats sometimes. And with the hats, I'm meaning uh, the caretaker in terms of being the wife, being the housekeeper, being the mom, uh, being the good sister, the good daughter, the good everything good things that we keep sorry <laughs> exactly 
and, and that is my experience from being here, being in, here in Albania for a few years now, that I have the privilege as a Swedish woman to take that hat off sometimes, some of the hats. I'm not wearing my mom hat very much anymore. That's my husband taking care of the mom hat at the moment. He's taking care of the household. He's taking care of the dogs because I can focus on my career. And that is what I'm also hoping will happen eventually within this environment in Albania, that you are able as a woman to take off some of your hats so you can pursue and do the career as what we saw also on the video here. When no, someone is shaking their heads here. Maybe you don't want it. Sorry? You don't want to take off some hats. <laughs> so that is what I'm looking forward to, because if it could happen in Sweden, I'm sure it's going to happen here and it's going to happen rapidly. And all of you that are participating here today, um, it in, I mean, it depends on how you see it. I mean, you can see Albania as a very, very old and ancient country, or you can see Albania as a country that is 30 years. So you are here. You're part of making the new history, the modern history of Albania. I'm sure that we will see future generations that have other types of ambition. Other women have other position and other possibilities. And I'm sure about that because I've seen a tremendous development only over the last four years here. So we should build on what's positive. And this is an extremely positive example. So. Fantastic. Uh, there was one thing that I then I can quote that you that you didn't mention, uh, Monica, and that is what I think um, uh, to change the media, not to train the journalists, to train and educate the audience. And I think that was brilliant. And that is what we do when we talk about changing mindsets. So thank you for that one liner. I'm going to use it. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Petra. Yes, it's it's challenging to change behaviors and social and cultural norms, but it's not impossible. So um, uh, that 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 is why it's also relevant to 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 promote these role models, to work with the narratives, with the storytelling, and with the media as well. Um, also for for these purposes and changing power structures, that's um, even more challenging. That's why we need more representation of girls and women in 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 STEM in Albania. So thank you to all the speakers for their input today. It has been a very good conversation. We have some time now for any other question or input from uh, all of you participating in person here today. We also um, have participants over Zoom and we have been uh, streaming online on Facebook as well. So thank you for everybody that has joined online and thank you for the others who have um, uh, watched us or followed us on the social media. So we have five to 10 minutes, even more more if there is uh, appetite for reflections or discussions or even question just short inputs uh, if you could tell your name or present yourself and then um, um, a comment a feedback or a question um, as you like if there is any at all <laughs> thanks Albona. Go ahead. Uh, hello, I am uh, Sonia Stefani. I'm uh, I'm in high school in Ernest Wadishi. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Yeah. Give an example. Yeah. Um, just, just, um, I participated in this program. I worked with Orneda. Uh, to me, uh, participating in this program was a really great experience. I learned uh, many new skills and they also helped me orientate um, in my uh, future career choice as a woman. Um, I think that it was a very uh, great experience, not only to me, but also to uh, the youngsters out there who would like to follow um, this road into fields of STEM. Uh, both I and uh, Ornella worked uh, 
with uh, Professor Yera. And uh, the discussion with her, I think that was uh, very motivating. Uh, she said that with hard work and dedication, uh, any stereotype could be um, thrown down. Uh, and women are very strong uh, and they can do everything uh, they want to. They can be any, uh, anyone they want to. Um, I think that in the future, uh, uh, there will be also many more possibilities to create a better environment uh, for women in STEM and for the, all the young generation out there. Thank you very much, Joanna. Hello, I am Fabiola and I uh, represent here the Today for the Future a grassroots organization. First of all, I would like to thank you very much, the STEAM organization and UNDP that make it us together, three organizations as grassroots organization and working for a very, very long time on the field against the violence and gender equality. Uh, and make it us together with the STEAM organization that it was for me personally, I don't know for Gruaya to Gruaya and uh, for on Gruaya, Vitin I saw here, it was the first time that I had the, uh, we had the chance to work on. And it was a really great experience. The second one, I would like to thank you, the STEAM organization that gets real, very, very professional experts, as Bona and Lorik, and after even the moderator and the facilitator, the professors, that gave it to the young group, gave real uh, tips and techniques, and no, let's say, a big frame of using media that they can get it in general in, in Googling or in every other documents. And it's remind me uh, the uh, boot camp that has been done for the first time together with UNDP in an other issue, in fact, in a rural women's vote, how to be innovative and creative. Uh, to promote, let's say, the right of the women's rural women to to vote against uh, the family voting. That in this time it was really, uh, really, uh, yeah, problematic and challenging. Yeah, and it was forty. The, even the way organizing the boot camp, it was forty eight hours boot camp endurance for 48 hours, youngsters, women and uh, girls and boys has been working on how to find really innovative things. And has been in the end, a kind of competition in the hand has been chosen a mascot, a big mascot that is going house to house and speaking about. And this, it was really a great experience for us, not for the group of youngsters, we will go on with this group that has been creating. And let's say we will use your uh, experience and your, uh, uh, let's say, experts too going on with such initiatives. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fabiola and Joanna, for your interventions. We have time only for one last comment. Sure. Hello, everybody. I'm Damian Belist, and I'm from Pogredet. Regarding to this training that we were part, a great idea that we immediately had was to practice all of our friends in Muharrem Solako High School. It was a super training, and all the knowledge we got was valuable. That's why we decided to do this. And we are really proud that we were part of this training. Thank you. Well done.
Very well, yes, knowledge sharing and supporting peer-to-peer -peer support also very, very important uh, um, as mentioned before. Um, I would like to um, close again. Thank you very much to all the speakers uh, for their participation. Sorry. Okay, go. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Marina, also a student from RMT local school. I wanted to ask you a question. So do you plan doing this kind of project also in Kosovo and Macedonia, uh, which are also cities in development and need this kind of project? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. For sure, we will try to expand this. It does not depend only on us. Uh, to be honest, for about two years, uh, we have been working on a pro bono basis for the network of Albanian women in STEM. So basically, we did everything voluntarily because we believed in what we were doing. And then Adliran and Tela, and Adliran and Tela, and I thank you very much for their uh, facilitation of us becoming part of the regional network of women in STEM by the UNDP that you mentioned and the Regional Cooperation Council. Um, there was no financial support, that, but there was a lot of networking and peer to peer support and access to other experts and individuals. So it helped our work to go directly then to, to young people. And of course, this was a, a, um, um, a first initiative. It was very important for us to work directly um, at the grassroots level. And we are uh, continuing our work, our fundraising work and our awareness raising towards stakeholders to continue the support, not only for us, but for other organizations as well that work in the same area to support as much as possible directly girls and women in STEM, or they want to make the transition from non-STEM to STEM, from non-tech to tech, with the overall purposes of social and economic empowerment. Um, I cannot say yes now, because I'm not sure I will be able to keep the promise. I told all this simply to highlight that we make our best uh, to uh, work with donors, to work with other organizations, and to reach as much as possible uh, grassroots level organizations and individuals. So we will do an additional effort. This is what I can promise now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Edlina, yes, please. I just wanted to uh, assure Petra when she said that Sweden is really very advanced, and it is, and uh, listening to all these Albanian uh, young uh, women and, and men here in this room and more in also in local cities where we've been um, I mean, gathering lots of, uh, of them in the three cities. It's very encouraging and it's, it's so, I'm so impressed each time we have uh, to do a work with young people because it's so rewarding that, uh, and it gives me personally hope that there is space for change in Albania and there is space enough for these young people to shine and also to go there with strong messages uh, to make Albania a better place. Thank you very much. And I will close only with two. I have to thank um, Erida. I don't know where she is. She's, um, she's an architect. So she is actually a woman in STEM, but she works very much. She works for SIDEV. In addition to being a lecturer as well, she works very much in mentoring uh, young people. So that's uh, one of her uh, strong points. And um, on a positive note, Edessa, she is our junior assistant. She's a physicist, a young physicist, and on Monday, I think, she's going to CERN, the Hadron Collider, for those who know what it is, is in Switzerland, she got a scholarship, so she will be representing Albania there, it's a huge achievement and we are very proud of her. So, hopefully we will have more girls succeeding in the STEM and in life as well, and hopefully we, all of us will do our contribution for a free and equal society. Thank you very much, and now we have a small reception and we can enjoy some conversations. Yes, of course, Erida is standing exactly for the group photo. <laughs> Let's have a group photo. Thank you very much, everybody.